Hey everybody, I got the TiVo Tarantula Pro and we're gonna build it today. My name's Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. So like I said, we're gonna be building the TiVo Tarantula Pro today, right here and it's gonna be awesome. I'm so pumped for this thing. There's so many people that say this thing really prints great, and I can't wait to see for myself. Um, I gotta thank TiVo for sending me the printer to uh, build it for you and to do some follow-up videos for you. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate the partnership, and uh, I hope it continues in the future. Um, a couple of facts right from their website, uh, or stats per se. The print speed, they say between 60 and 150 millimeters a second. The build volume is uh, 235 by 235 by 250. Uh, the layer resolution on their website, they say between 0 0.05 and 0 0.35. Um, it's got an MK3 heat bed. Uh, it supports all sorts of different materials. You're gonna get PLA, ABS, flexible PLA, wood, PVA, hips, PETG, all the good stuff. Um, it's a 24 volt power supply, uh, eight and a half amps if you need to know, and 200 watts. Um, and it's an MKS Gen L version one uh, control board and an MKS mini LCD display. So that's the stats and uh, let's get this thing built. Let's do it. So I just got the box open to get this going and I wanted to show you a little bit. Um, in the top, there's a foam piece there and everything is packed in here pretty dang good. I just wanna point out that this is a full kit. You have to build everything from the bottom up. Uh, unlike like the Ender 3, which is partially built and you just finish it, this is a full kit. So it is gonna take a little while. But if I tip this box up, maybe, you can kind of see inside and stuff will kind of slide, but everything's packed pretty good. And uh, we're gonna dive in and get this build going. All right, so I just unboxed everything here and I laid it all out. And there was a couple cool things that I wanted to point out. Number one, uh, all of the bags of parts are individually labeled. And they call those out in the instructions, which is really cool. There's even one in here for tools. Um, there's screws. All the different bags are labeled. So in the instructions, you're not digging through plastic bags trying to find specific screws. All the bags are labeled. That way you can go right to those and get those parts. That's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing is, like I said, it's a full kit. Almost nothing here is assembled. There's a couple pieces. And uh, so we're going to have to do it all. Um, a couple other things. It looks like we got a full build sheet. In the early ones, I believe there was holes in each corner. In this case, there's not. Uh, it's gonna sit right over the top. And I'm assuming they're gonna use clips. I haven't got that far yet. They do include um, a USB, some uh, Bowden tubes, um, the belts, of course, uh, the motors, the screen, uh, the control box. I mean, everything you see is pretty cool. The other thing I noticed is they give you uh, this for your test filament and uh, it's just kind of here it's all tangled up um, I'm not a fan of that I wish you would have been on a spool or you know a little easier to use I'm not sure I probably won't use this but I uh, just wanted to throw it out there they do give you some some filament and it's more than Creality gives you um, on their Ender 3s but it's just kind of it was all tangled and stuff when I got it other than that I got it all ready Let's get building. So step number one, what you wanna do is grab the A01 bag, uh, the two 20 by 40 extrusions here, and the two uh, 20 by 40, 250 millimeter extrusion here. These are 350 millimeters, these are 250 millimeters. And you're gonna orientate them just like this. Now, in the, other, in the older instructions, it says to make sure the countersunk um, parts are face down. In this case, they're actually countersinking both sides. So it shouldn't matter which orientation you are. Then you need this one right here, and it has five holes in there. Um, you can see them through there. And it's gonna be orientated just like this. Then what you're gonna do is take your bag of parts. We're gonna spill all the parts onto the table. And again, I really like that they give you bag numbers and names. That way you can look ex just right towards those parts. Um, it makes it so much easier. Next thing we want to do is pull up the uh, bolts and we are going to do that and this. 
So I just stood up all of those um, and we're gonna just put the spring washers on all of them just so you don't forget to do that. That's probably a good idea. So once we get all the spring washers on here, um, we are going to take the longer screws and we're gonna attach the uh, extrusions to each other. So two are gonna go in here um, and two on the other side. I'll get them started with my fingers. So they're started good. And then two are gonna go in this side. I'm actually gonna use my driver here. They did come with Allen wrenches. You can use those two in the kit. I just find this to be a little bit quicker. I'm gonna put these four screws in and I'll be right back. All right, so I got the two bolts put in here and here, and now everything's held together pretty nice. I want to point out that you wanna do this on a hard level surface. When I did this and I put it together, it was really, it was really rocking. So I actually had to twist the extrusions a little bit uh, in order to make them all flush and level. And I want to reiterate the fact that these have to be flush and level and square from the bottom up. It'll be a much better print if everything's just straight from the beginning. I'm gonna take a measuring tape here and we're gonna measure. And I got 13 inches on the outside. We got 13 inches on the outside and I got 13 inches on the outside. That tells us that we're straight all the way across. Um, you can also do the inside if you want to. Um, that's up to you. I just went all the way up and it was 13 in three spots. I'm pretty good. I'm gonna move on now. Now take the feet and these bolts here and we are going to put the T-nuts on the end. So you can put your Allen wrench in the bottom, take your T-nut and just give it a couple twists. We wanna make sure these are still pretty loose because we need to put them on. Um, so they don't need to be tight or anything yet. And they're pretty easy, you just throw them through the center and hold it and then screw your T-nut on. Now you wanna put the T-nut on so the angles are down. So it's flat up here and then it angles downwards. If you put them on the opposite way, they'll be upside down. Now take the feet, and the way to do that is to take your T-nut, line it up straight, push it in, take your Allen wrench or your driver, and spin it. Just do it so it's tight, but not too tight, because you don't want to crush this rubber here. Um, I'll show you exactly what that looks like in a second. One thing I noticed on this side is I went over the edge. Let's keep it all, we got to keep them pushed in so we don't go over this edge. And when you get them done, they'll look like that. So I got the back on here and I just wanted to point something out. If I tip this up and turn it sideways a little, you can see that uh, these two here are on the outside extrusion. These two here, so if I do this, the shorter side up here, they're on the inside of the extrusion. And the instructions do say to do that, I just wanted to point that out. So go inside extrusion here, outside extrusion there, and then we'll flip this over and we're gonna install our next extrusion right on the top. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, you'll need the next extrusion here, which I believe is the uh, 400 millimeter one, but inside of that, the Z screw or your lead screw lives. So you wanna be very careful that if you're working, you don't dump that out and you don't hit the ground with it uh, because you don't want that to warp. The next step is to take this 400 millimeter extrusion and make sure that um, where they counter sunk it here is face up because your bolt heads are gonna go inside of that. So we're gonna do that. Take the four bolts that are left in that first pack and we are just gonna screw them uh, down in. Now I got the top extrusion on and I wanna point out that you need to make this um, flush and straight with the rest of the frame. So how I did that was, first I got a small square like this. And I went to the edges and I loosened up these four bolts just a little bit and I made sure that I was square across here, you know, from here to here. Then I flipped it around and I did the same thing on this side. Made sure this was square with this. Then what I did while I was holding it here is I tightened you know, a screw here, um, I tightened this one, and then I kind of went in a star pattern. You don't have to do that, just how I did it. And when I was all done, I took my measuring tape 
and I just measured. And I got the same measurement in each four of the corners now, and that's how you know you're gonna be straight. Now grab the front panel assembly, which is this one here, your screen, and bag labeled A-02. How we're gonna install this is the panel is gonna go like this. It's gonna be pushed in from the back. But there's these little brass spacers here, like that. And they need to go between the back and your control panel. And in the front, we're gonna use four of these little baby screws, and we're gonna use four of those little baby screws also in the back of the control panel, and they're gonna screw into either side of your spacer. So how that's gonna look is we will take our little baby screw here, we're gonna push it through, you're gonna take a spacer, you're gonna screw it on to that Make sure it's tight, and we're gonna do all four. Now I got all four of the uh, black little bolts in there, and all four of the spacers in. Now we're gonna take our screen, we're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna set it right on top of those spacers. And it should line up with all four of those holes. Then, take your little black uh, bolts again, and it's gonna be hard to see, but there's you're basically gonna screw them in from the back. I'm gonna use our Allen wrench for this. I found that was easier. But just like this, so there's gonna be one here, one there, one here, and one there. So now we got all four of these bolts in from the back, and how that looks from the front is just like this. So it's actually probably gonna sit like that on the, on the uh, printer. And you just wanna be careful you don't break anything. It looks like there's a full-size SD card here, um, a button here, and you just wanna make sure you don't break you know, anything while you're putting this on from the back or anything. Now take the, the little bolts that are left in the T-nuts and those are actually gonna go in these two holes right on the side of each side. Just a quick PSA, I got the T-nuts on here and you always wanna leave them loose because later we're gonna be installing these. So you wanna keep them loose now so you don't have to loosen them later. Now take your Y-axis motor, the plate, and the four small black bolts here, um, put your plug facing forward towards you, put the motor on the top, and then we're gonna take the four black bolts and screw these in. And we wanna make sure they are totally secure because that's gonna hold this plate to the motor. So I got all four secure here. And um, as you can see, like, the plug is still facing down towards you. Take the M4, flip these over, Take the M4 bolts and the T-nuts and just put them in all three holes. Remember, you do not want to make these tight because you're gonna use them later and you'll just have to loosen them anyway. So push from the bottom up, push your M4, and then take your T-nut, put your T-nut on and do that for all three. So once you get your T-nuts here, as you can see they're in the top, you have your plug and your face forward. In this orientation here, we have the two holes here and the one. So we're gonna take our longer screw that came in that kit, push it through. Then we are gonna take our spacer and drop that on. Then we're gonna take one of the bearings and it needs to be big side down. And you'll know what I mean. There's a small side and a big side. Then we're gonna take the next bearing and go small side down. So the two small sides are now in the center. It's a lock washer or lock nut and we are going to tighten that down onto it. So what I'll do is I'll grab my Allen wrench here and I'll grab a little wrench for this side and we'll just tighten it down. So I went ahead and zoomed in so you can see this uh, as it was finished. We have screw, mount, spacer, uh, bearing, bearing, lock nut and you just want to get it tight but not over tight these will still turn nicely and um, that will complete that step that now the last thing we have to do is put our last t-nuts in so now this is complete as you can see bolts in the front see in the back we have t-nut t-nut and our uh, bearing assembly now we take our grub screw and we're gonna set it down on there for now, and I'm just gonna tighten it in a little bit. Um, I'm actually gonna raise it up a little, 
and just tighten it in just enough to hold it. But later on, we're going to be adjusting this. Um, but the instructions did say to put it on at this point. Now we're going to move on to the bed carriage assembly and it's going to be screws bag B02. That's what this is here. I got everything laid out exactly how it's going to go and the bed carriage is, is orientated the way it needs to be as well. So as you can see, the two tabs are here and if I turn them up, you can see that better. There's two tabs and they are facing to my right. And then you have uh, two different sets, four wheels here and two different sets. On this side, we have the eccentric nuts and those are gonna go in this side here. And this side, you're gonna have your free rolling wheels. Just how I have them laid out is how they're gonna go together. So we're gonna do a screw into the wheel, into the spacer, down through the carriage, and then lock washer on the end. And we're gonna do that for this side. On the eccentric nut side, we're gonna do a screw down through the wheel into a little bit of washer here, down through the eccentric nut, which will face down into here like that. And then underneath, we'll do the lock nuts. So what I mean is you have your bolt, your wheel, your brass spacer in there, and then your eccentric nut. And on your eccentric nut, it looks like this. You wanna make sure that goes in so the lip is down here because that is what will flip over and go inside the plate. So now we have all four wheels on our uh, bed carriage assembly. On the right side here, you have your eccentric nuts and on the left side here, they're just your standard. If I flip this around so you can see the back, you can see everything's tightened from the back and it is okay to tighten these down on the eccentric nut side. Um, don't over tighten them, but it's okay to have them tight because you don't want these wobbling at all. So this is how the motor will be orientated. You'll have the two T-nuts here and the one here. The motor plug is back facing the back of the machine. I like to uh, just hold them and push them in like this. And then you're in there. Now all you need to do is tighten them from the bottom. It'll spin those T-nuts and lock those in. Okay, quick time for a little explanation about the next shots where I add the belt. I need to interject because originally when I built this, I actually screwed up and uh, I did not have this in the right orientation. So in the next couple shots, you're gonna see this backwards. The motor is gonna be here, the pulley is gonna be here, and that's not how it should be. This is how it should be. This is the front of the machine. Your end stop should be here. Your pulley should be here. Your back motor should be there. And your belt should be on the right side of the machine as you're looking at it. So just so you see the orientation, this is the back of the machine. So the short piece here is the rear. Your motor sits here and then the long piece is right here. Now right here on the same side as the motor, we're gonna install the idler pulley. It's just gonna sit right in here and it's just gonna tighten in right through the top of the extrusion. Your T-nut should spin and tighten it down. Um, you don't have to go crazy tight right now because we are going to tighten it up when we do the belt. But it's in there. Now what we want to do is pull the carriage back so it lines up right here with the gear. And we need this to be exactly lined up because that's where your belt's going to go through. As you can see, mine's not. See, it's a little bit low on the gear side. So we're going to loosen the grub screws here just a little bit. We're going to raise this up and make sure that's even. As you can see, you want to make sure that is even back there, uh, not above or below. So I got it adjusted, and as you can see, as I bring it through, it is just about perfect. Just in line with that grub screw, and that's exactly what you need. I just want to point out that when you do tighten these grub screws down and you get it lined up, make sure that one of them is on the flat spot, and that way uh, it won't move later, and make sure they're good and tight. Now what we want to do is go to bag B-03-1, grab an end stop, an end stop mount, uh, a bolt, the T-nut, and two little screws. Now we're going to make sure the mount here is um, orientated just like this, square side on the left, round side or ovular side on the right. We're going to take your end stop, and place it on, take your two screws and screw it to that board. Now that you got this screw down to the board, um, I was wrong. We need one of the black screws and the T-nuts. So 
Also, I wanted to point out when I was tightening this down, I held it from the sides. I started both and then I tightened one at each time. That way I wasn't pressing down on any of the components here. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't break anything. So I held it from the side while I was screwing it in. Take your bolt, push it down through the top and attach your T-nut like we have a few other times already. Now we take that end stop and we slide it into the right side of our frame here. The other side here is our idler pulley and this is where it's gonna go. And I'm gonna pull it almost all the way back. I'm gonna hold it there. I'm gonna use my Allen wrench, in this case my Allen driver, and just tighten it in uh, so it's nice and even. Now, because there's only one here, just make sure it's straight um, and flush here with the frame and you're gonna come back and that's gonna be your Y end stop. The next thing we're gonna need is one of the belts that came with the kit and some zip ties. And the zip ties, they're all in bag labeled tools. This is gonna be um, a little bit tricky, but we're gonna get through it and we're gonna make it work. So what we need to do is this is the teeth of the belt. We need to make sure those teeth are orientated so they can go around here and then they're gonna come around your idle or pulley and then come back in and connect into your plate. So in order to do that, I'm gonna pull this back and start with the end here. This is a little better shot. We're gonna push the belt through here. And as you can see, the teeth are here. We're gonna bend the belt over so the teeth are smushed against each other. And then we're gonna take a couple of zip ties and, and zip tie this real tight together. So now you can see I looped the belt over and I, t I secured them with two zip ties. You can see the tails hanging off right here. You can see the belt is looped over each other. The two zip ties are securing it. Now all we need to do is just snip those tails off. And you got a connected belt to your plate. Now that we have it secured under this side and you can see the teeth are going against the grub gear here right here. We're gonna bring that around just like this. We're gonna loop it under our idler here and we're gonna secure it to the other side of this plate. So it comes around the gear here, comes up, goes around our idler pulley, um, our tensioner and then it comes back down here and it's gonna secure in the same tab like it did on this side under this plate. Now, as you can see, I went down around that pulley, I went through the belt slot here and we have quite a bit of belt left. So we wanna make sure we have some tension on here um, before we zip tie these. So you don't want it to be completely loose because then you won't get it tight enough uh, when you're tensioning your belt because we're gonna actually cut the excess off here. So make sure you have some okay tension here, or some decent tension here. Um, you can pull it through a little bit, you know, if you want it a little better. So uh, once you got some good tension, uh, it doesn't have to be real tight right now, just has to be uh, some good tension on there. That way it's not all sloppy. That way when you pull the idler back, it actually will tension this. We're gonna pinch this together. We're gonna zip tight right in here. And then we're gonna cut the excess belt off when we're done with that. So I was finding this kind of hard to keep tension and then try to zip tie all at once. So what I did was I put my zip ties on loose, as you can see here. Now I'm gonna pull my tension just to make sure I have some, some good tension through there. Once I get it where I want it, I'll uh, put the zip ties down and I'll secure it. And now that I have some good tension, I'm gonna slide my zip tie down and we're gonna attach it like that. You wanna snip your belt about like that. So it leaves about an inch here, but everything is nice and tight. Uh, you should have a good tight connection here in your belt. It, the teeth should be grabbing each other so you're not gonna slip. And when you go back and forth now, everything is good and your um, pulley on the other side is rolling as well. So now that we got our belt on, you can see it starts here, it wraps around goes around the pulley and then it connects back here like we just shown. Now what we wanna do is pull our Y carriage all the way back 
um, almost till it hits that idler pulley, just right before it. Then, as you can see here, this is our Y end stop. What we need to do is we need to push this forward and until it stops on this wheel. That way your Y will stop before it crashes into that idler pulley. So if you listen, when you push it forward, you hear a click. So what you want to do is hold your Y carriage right before it crashes into that pulley. Then take your Y and stop here, push it forward until it clicks. And that's where you're going to tighten it in. And that will be your final resting place. You can adjust this later, but it should click right before the carriage crashes into your pulley. Grab your control box and you need to grab the bag A04. On the control box, you find all of your stuff uh, zip tied here. Just very carefully cut that zip tie. Um, we're going to need this to be loose. That way we can put the control box on. Turn your control box right side up. Then take one of the bolts here and push it up through the bottom like this and install your T-nut on there. Slide our base over and you're going to line that the front of this thing up so the T-nut goes inside the extrusion underneath here carefully. There we go. And then it needs to be on the inside extrusion. So once your T-nut is set here, it's going to set it in the path. If I spin this around, now you can see that this is the back of the machine and your T-nut will hold this up and we're going to use a couple more of these screws here and we're just, we're going to attach um, the control box right to the frame. I'm not going to tighten them fully yet. Just get them in there. Then turn this on its side. When it's on its side, your T-nut will be right here. It's kind of hard to see. Just make sure it's in that extrusion and tighten it in like we've done the other ones. So if we spin that back over. Your control box is now sitting on it just like that. You got two bolts or screws here, um, bolts really, and then a T-nut connecting it underneath here. Now grab your power supply here and you'll find the connector on both sides and connect that in. From that package, you have three more screws and T-nuts. Those are gonna go right here with the screw facing down and the T-nut underneath. Now that the T-nuts are on all three of those, we wanna slide our power supply in on the left side or the side opposite of the control box. Um, we're gonna slide it in and just be careful for these wires. You don't wanna crimp or pinch them or anything like that. They should sit underneath this extrusion just fine. So slide those in and we're going to put the, uh, oops, gotta make sure your T-nuts are orientated right. They're gonna sit in that extrusion and we're gonna tighten these three down to hold the power supply. So I flipped this over so you can see what it looks like from the bottom. Here's your control panel. <clears throat> and so I flipped this over so you could see what it looks like from the bottom. Here's your control box and here's your power supply. Now there is a little screw right here that actually is the grounding screw that screws into here. And it's just long enough where it's actually scratching up my bar top pretty bad. So I put some uh, tape over it for now and I believe I'm gonna to have to go through and put a washer or two in there just so it's a little bit um, shorter and it doesn't scrape. Now what we wanna do is take the front panel that we made before and it is going to install on the front of the printer. You wanna line up your um, T-nuts and what they'll do is they'll, ex they'll slide right into the extrusions if they're all lined up and it should sit just like this. Tighten those T-nuts in so it's nice and tight. Something to think about, we do not want to over tighten these. Um, just all the way till it's snug and that's about it. Next thing we need is our hot bed here. We need bag is B-02-1 and that's going to 
include everything we need to connect the plate, the hotbed, to the carriage here. How that's gonna work is we're gonna take a screw, we're gonna push it through, we're gonna take a spring, we're gonna push that right here, and then we're gonna put it down into the plate, into the carriage. So this shot shows better how everything is connected. What we have here is the bolt up here that comes down through, the spring, and this is our carriage, our plate. So we need to take the wheels and put them on. The easiest way to do that is to hold the top and spin them. And they're gonna spin this way to tighten. Now we do not want to tighten these all the way down yet. Just get all four wheels on and then we'll go through that process. So I got all the wheels on and what we need to do is grab an Allen wrench and just go ahead and start tightening. I'm holding the wheel at the bottom and I'm gonna tighten this one about halfway. So then I'm gonna tighten this one about halfway. And then I'm gonna go to the back and tighten those about halfway as well. So tighten them all about halfway and then go back and tighten them all, all the way down. But make sure you start at the front, go here, then go to the back and tighten them halfway, then come back and finish them and then finish the back all the way too. You don't wanna just tighten this one all the way down and then this one all the way down because then you might get warping in your plate here. Even though this is a pretty good, nice thick plate, we wanna make sure we're even. So start with these two about halfway, go to here about halfway, come back, finish it all the way, and then finish the back all the way. Now I got them all, all the way tight. So what I need to do now is loosen them all four full turns each. The easiest way to do that is to hold the wheel here and take your Allen wrench and it's here. So there's one, two, three, four. And this is gonna help us with setting our Z height and leveling the bed later. This was actually taught in Luke Hatfield's help guide. Um, and this is how we level the beds per that guide. Now I'm gonna work on my extrusions. So what we need is the two bigger extrusions and the B01 bag. And the contents of the bag, there are these spring washers and these bolts. Put a spring washer on each one of those bolts. Then we are going to use those bolts to install the uprights. So the bolts are gonna go through right here and the extrusions are gonna screw in like this. As far as I can tell, there's no appropriate way to put these on, it can go on either way. I think the easiest way to get them started is to turn them on their side, like so. Then you can put two of your bolts through. You can hold this here and you can start the tightening process. Now you do not want to finish it like this because these need to be square. But to get them started, I found this was the easiest way. So now what we have is your two extrusions on. Remember, they're not tightened all the way down. You can still move them just a little bit and that's good. We're gonna to need to adjust those in a little while. So what we have are the contents from B04-1 and then the carriage. And what we need to do is put these together just like we did the other ones. So. We're gonna put that there. Um, there's only one eccentric nut on these, so you only need to do that uh, one time. So what we need to do is take the wheel, go down on, then a spacer, and we're gonna do that for another one. So now you have screw, or bolt, wheel, spacer, and that's how that, that goes. The next one is gonna go uh, bolt, wheel, the little washer, then eccentric nut, face up, and that's on like that. How we install them is we take the one with the eccentric nut, and that one is going to go on the top here. And we take our lock washer and we secure them from the back like we did on the other one. The other two wheels will go on here and here and we'll secure them all with the lock nuts from behind. So these are all on, the centric nut up top, the two regulars here. I'm gonna 
uh, grab my pliers and we're gonna secure these and get them tight. Now they're nice and secure, everybody's tight. Now what we need is this plate here and we need bag B04. These wheels are gonna be a little bit different. So you can start by pushing your screws up from the bottom like so. Now this is gonna be um, a little bit different than the other ones. So the first couple are pretty easy. We do the screws first, then your spacer on both of them, then the wheel. Like so. On this one, what we need to do is take your centric nut and put it face down, so flange part down, then your little spacer, then the wheel, then the lock nut goes on top. So take the rest, put your lock nuts on these two and get everything tightened, and we'll go on to the next step. So once they're all tightened, you end up end up with this. Uh, your eccentric nut is up on top here, your regular ones are down here, and we're gonna flip it over like this and turn it around. Now we need to do the other idler. So grab the little bolt here, grab your bearing, your, other, your bearing face in, your spacer, and then this is a tapped hole. So what we do is we're actually gonna screw this down into that tapped hole. Flip this bad boy over and you can see it's sticking out. Take a, the small nut that comes in the kit and just secure that on the back and just make sure it's good and tight. Now I have the left carriage with bag B03 and I dumped it out right here. What we're gonna need is uh, this piece here for the lead screw. And we're gonna need the four smaller, there's four of them, screws, along with the four smaller spring washers. So one by one, we're gonna push these screws through the back here, all four of them. Then, I think it's easier if you hold them with your finger and flip them over a little bit and put the spring washers on. You're gonna put them on all four. So I got all four pushed through here and we're gonna take and we're gonna just push, push this on like that. Out of the screw kit, there was four nuts. Secure those nuts on each of these screws. Now you can see from this side, it is in. From the underside, we're tightened on. So the next thing we need is this extrusion here, which is for the X gantry. And we're gonna connect it to this. And how that's gonna work is, we are going to put this in just like this, and then tighten those down. Um, both sides here are cut out, which is nice. And what we're gonna use is these two bigger screws that came in that last bag we opened. So put the big spring washers on them. So we're gonna secure this extrusion to this carriage just like this. So I'm gonna start by uh, just getting them together. Then we're gonna grab the Allen wrench or your driver, whatever you're using, and you can start screwing them down in. Now the nice thing about this being on the outside is that we can really adjust our X gantry a lot easier now. Uh, compared to like an Ender 3, which we would have to take off the whole thing. We can actually just loosen these here and uh, adjust it. What I'm gonna do now is just get them to snug um, because there's a good chance we will need to adjust that. I am flush here, I'm gonna start like that and I'm hoping that's straight. Next thing we wanna do is grab a stepper motor and take that carriage you just made and push the stepper motor up through the bottom. Then grab the four of the small M3 by six screws and we're just gonna just set the screws in. We're not gonna tighten these right now, but just enough where it's gonna hold the stepper motor up and uh, it's not gonna fall out of the carriage. Now what we need is another end stop, the bigger mounting piece and two of those screws. This is gonna sit on here just like that. So end stop over here 
and then this will be your long side here. We're gonna take those two screws and mount that in just like we did before. So now what you got is a stepper motor here um, with the cabling going this way. I used two of the small screws to mount it um, in the top here. Then we're gonna take our end stop and we're gonna put, put it right here. So we need to use M3 by 10 screws and we're gonna push them through and screw it right in and it'll secure itself to the stepper motor. So when you're done, you'll have your end stop here and your stepper motor here. The next thing we're gonna do is let's get our X carriage here on the extrusion. And how we're gonna do that is, this is how the orientation is. It's face backwards. Uh, your eccentric nut is down here and we're gonna take it and just slide it over uh, the extrusion. So what we need to do is check and see how this rolls just like we did before. Currently it's not rolling very good. I'm going to take my wrench. I am going to twist the eccentric nut until it wobbles. So it's all wobbly now. Then I'm going to come back just step by step just until we get that wobble out. The idea is you want to take the wobble out, but you don't want it too tight. So there's a little bit of wobble there. And I'm talking just barely turning it. No wobble, and this thing's rolling really good. Next step is we're actually going to go through and get the X gantry on. But first we need to take this assembly and we need to make sure that it's rolling correctly. So it's going to go on and it's going to be on just like this. As you can see, it's wobbling. Just like before, we're gonna grab our wrench, we're gonna grab the eccentric nut, which is down in here, and we're just gonna tighten it ever so slightly until that wobble goes away. So, still a little bit of wobble. Wobble's almost gone. And this thing is rolling really nicely. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the right side. So we're gonna take that right carriage, we're gonna put it on and see how it's rolling. As you can tell, very loose. Just like before, take your wrench and just slowly tighten it until it, that wobble comes out. There we go. We're rolling real nice and there's no wobble. And that takes care of our right carriage. So I took the X gantry off, I took the right carriage, and I put the bolts and the T-nuts that are supposed to be in the right carriage on now. Um, we're gonna put everything back together in just a second, but first we need to get these um, aligned in here. So in order to do that, we need to use Luke's X gantry rework and uh, get this thing pretty straight. So what we're gonna do is uh, work on getting this gantry all straight now. So I'm gonna put this side on. We got it rolling good already. I'm gonna put the right side on here. And I missed a wheel. There we go. It's rolling good already as well. So what we need to do is, is a little bit different than the Creality machines because it has these T-nuts. But what we can do is we don't want to force it, but we need to turn these here so everything is straight, just like the Creality machines. So when this is on here, what we need to do is just align these so everything matches up perfectly straight here and everything rolls real nice. Then from the back side, let's go ahead and tighten our uh, T-nuts up. Just spin them so they get locked in but I'm not gonna tighten them yet. And now everything is rolling good. Remember, uh, be careful, I did not tighten these yet. So we kind of went through and we got them straight this way. And now we got everything on here and it's rolling up and down real good. But I think what we need to do now is measure and just see what we got. So we got 13 inches there and 13 inches there. And if I lift this up, I have 
13 inches, 13 inches, and 13 inches. So what I'm gonna do now, because I'm all straight, is I'm gonna take the top bar here, and there, it only goes in one way. There's the cutouts here for the bolt heads, so it'll sit on top of like this. Then we're gonna take the four big bolts that go in the top and get them started. And all I'm doing now is tightening them down. I'm gonna start with one. I'll come over here to the other one. So what we did by leaving these loose is we were able to kind of twist them to make sure they're not only straight this way, but they're straight for the wheels to travel in them. And that's very important. We teach that in the X Gantry rework in uh, Luke Hetfield's help guide. Um, I've done videos on it. If you go back and look up my X Gantry rework, you can actually do just about the same procedure on this machine as you can on that one. I'm gonna flip over to the small end of an Allen wrench because that always gets us the tightest. We never wanna use the long end to do this part. It could strip out. And a lot of times with these cheaper Allen wrenches, it will strip out that ball. Now that we're all tight in here, I wanna just check it one more time. So we're at right about 13, right about 13, right about 13, all the way up and down. That is great because that means we're square here. This is rolling pretty good. There is some divots I don't like, um, but that could just be the wheels. Yeah, the wheels have little uh, creases in them, like seams, and they're kind of bumping when I'm wheeling, you can hear it. And that's just the wheel, so I'm hoping that doesn't affect our print. Now that we know this is structurally straight, we need to go underneath here and just tighten up those two bolts that hold these up. I'm going to actually turn this on its side like this, just take the Allen wrench and just make sure uh, we're good and tight. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on the Z motor here. So we need the motor and we need B07. So I dumped the bag out and the first thing we need to do is put the bolts through the top here. And those will sit down in because it's recessed. And on the back of that, put your T-nuts. Then we're gonna take a stepper motor, face with the electrical face towards you and we're gonna put this spacer on like this with the T-nuts towards the back. So I'm gonna turn that this way. Here's the electrical. Uh, here's the mount, goes on top like this. T-nuts in the back. Grab your um, Phillips head screwdriver and there's two screws that we're actually going to tighten this mount down into the stepper. Something to note when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that these Phillips are good and tight, but be careful you don't wanna strip them. So this is what we have. Our mount is on, our Phillips head are tight, and we have our T-nuts here. Now what we wanna do is take our stepper motor and install it right here behind the right side. So you can see this is our X gantry. Um, we're gonna install the stepper motor right there. Grab your Allen wrench or whatever you've been using. In my case, I'll use this driver here and spin that around. And I'm, I'm going to make it snug, but not all the way tight yet, just until we know that we're straight when we put everything on. Now I wanna get the coupler and put it on. And there is a flat spot right here in the shaft and that's where I want to align the uh, grub screws here. So make sure you're on. You don't want it all the way down. You don't want it touching the, the uh, O-ring at the bottom, but just make sure it's on and this is aligning with that grub screw. I'm gonna use the long side just to get it secured. Then I'm gonna flip it around and take the small side here and just give it a good tighten. Do the same thing for both. The next thing you wanna do is grab your lead screw here, feed it down through, and we're gonna feed it all the way down until it hits that coupler. And it needs to go 
all the way into that coupler. But here's something that I had to change while I was doing this. I was putting my lead screw down in, as you can see, it is in and it does go in nice, but it is not supposed to hit the shaft here. So I had to raise my coupler up um, and on the inside, there's actually a little space and you wanna make it just even with that space. Then what you wanna do is when you put your lead screw in here, you wanna make sure that it's in, get it in, make sure it's not bottomed out on the shaft and then go ahead and tighten your grub screws. Next thing we wanna do is just make sure that our shaft is straight and that we're very even uh, between the top and the bottom. Otherwise, what we might need to do is add some shims to pull out the motor a little bit. What I prefer to do is take your Z coupler and spin this thing all the way up once. I know it takes a minute. So go all the way up, just so it has some time to adapt. Um, I do have to say this lead screw is very straight. It's actually straighter than the Creality ones I have. Then bring this thing back down and that'll give you one good full motion te test here. Now what we're gonna do is install our extruder. So grab the stepper motor that has the gear here and you want the electronics facing back so facing this way, and we're gonna push this up. Then we're gonna take our extruder, and that's gonna go on just like this. Then grab the long screws. These will all go down through. Just make sure, there we go. Make sure they're grabbing, and there'll be three of them. One, two, and three. Grab your Allen wrench and tighten these down. Do not over tighten or you'll break this plastic here. So just tighten them down so they're snug and that's it. Now I'm tightening these down and you just wanna be very careful with this one here. You just wanna get it just so it's snug, but you do not wanna over tighten. If you do, this extruder gear will just, it'll be hard to turn and it won't function like it's supposed to. Now what you wanna do is go to the left side of the machine um, and then you wanna spin the shaft so the flat side is this way here. Then take the gear, push it on so one of the grub screws will be on the flat side. And right now they're too tight. You may have to loosen them just a little bit to get them on. There we go. And how you want to align this is you want to make sure that this is aligned with here because this is where your belt is going to travel through, right through that extrusion. Tighten your two grub screws. For the next part, uh, we just got this grub screw on. What we need to do is push the stepper motor all the way to the right. Um, now, I did notice that these actually have paper on them. You can peel that paper off. I did not know that before. Um, so I might pull this off and peel that paper off. We're gonna start by putting the next belt on. So grab your next belt, and you're gonna start on this side. So we're gonna feed the belt through the left side of the carriage. Again, uh, teeth to teeth here. And there's actually a little slot in the back that makes this one a little bit easier. Then we're gonna secure it with our zip ties, uh, just like we did the last time. So as you can see, I got them secured with the zip ties here, teeth to teeth, that is not going anywhere. And the teeth are facing up right now, right here. So the next step would be to bring it around here, around the uh, pulley we made here. And then, we need to, oops, so we're gonna bring it around here and, f Jesus, there we go. So we need to bring it around here, we need to put it in this extrusion like I'm doing here, and the teeth will be face down. When you get it in that extrusion, it'll slide underneath the carriage here. Then, once you get it far enough out, you can pull it 
like that. So make sure you get all the slack out from this side and it's underneath that carriage. Now what we're going to do is bring the belt down and around your gear here. So it'll come underneath and it'll lock in right here. It'll come underneath, it'll come up from the bottom. Then you want to pull out the slack. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult. There we go. And we're coming up from the bottom because you always want to zip tie these teeth to teeth. So you don't want to ever forget that you want to be teeth to teeth. So then hold it tight, bring it around the gear on the left side like we showed, come up through the bottom and like that. Now, this is pretty important. There's not a lot of movement here, so you need to make sure there's some good tension on your belt before you zip tie it. I can already tell you there's not enough on mine, so I'm going to pull it a little tighter and just and just make sure that you got a good amount of tension on there. So what I did was I made sure there was decent tension here. It's down around the pulley. It comes up like we showed, back down so it's teeth to teeth, and I got a zip tie. The zip tie I put on there just like we did before. I got it on there loose, and then um, I, you know, I tightened it in when I could get enough tension on that belt. Before I cut this, I want to tension it and just make sure I got enough tension. Um, I don't have to cut these and start over. To do that, what I'm going to do is go on the left side where this motor is. Now this is your tensioner. I'm going to pull it tight, make sure we got some twang. I think we got enough. I'm going to hold it tight and tighten this stepper motor down. Now I'm using the small side uh, because a lot of times the big sides, the ball ends, they will strip and we don't want that to happen. So just be real careful because they're small bolts and you don't want to strip the bolt or your Allen wrench. Now we should have a good twang. We can take our cutters. We can go way up in here. And cut off the rest of that belt. I just wanted to point out a mistake I made. So if you look at the last shots, uh, when I did the belt, I actually ran it over the top of this extrusion and that's not the correct way. What it does is it runs through the bottom of the extrusion around here and then back under. Otherwise, you're not able to, to roll it. It won't go because it hits that top extrusion. So what I did was I had to take the loops off. Um, if I spin this around, if you see that, right here, there's a loop. And I was able to slide that off, put it where it's supposed to be running, and then slide it back on. And that's how I fixed it. But I had it running up here, and it really should be running underneath. So it should run from here, around your pulley, under the extrusion here, around the gear, and then back under here. That's how it should run. Nothing on top. Now what we want to do is start mounting the hot end. So you're going to grab this piece here and a couple of M3 by 8 screws. And we are going to go in. What I'm going to do is put one of those screws in and hold it with my Allen wrench. And how it mounts is straight on right here. So I'm going to give this thing a couple turns so it, I know it's going to stay. Then I'm going to mount the other one in and we can tighten these all the way down. Now we have this piece mounted and it's nice and solid. So we grab the hot end here and it runs in like this. And your Bowden coupler will come up and you want to make sure that <clears throat> your cables are running through that little area there. Then grab some M3 by 8 screws and they will screw down from the top straight into the hot end. Now we have all four of those installed. Our cables are running out the left side if we're looking at the machine. Now I'm going to clip 
the cable tie that's holding everything together here for now. And I'm gonna run it down the back, just like this. Now grab your PTFE tube, push it all the way down as far as it can go. There we go. In the back, it needs to go all the way into that ex extruder as far as it can go, like that. So our PTFE tube is now installed. Peel the protective coating off of the plate. After I peeled it, I put the bed mat back on. I'm gonna lower the hot end by hand with the Z-rod here, with the Z-screw rotating the coupler. And I'm gonna bring it down just so the nozzle touches the bed. You saw it right there, ready? You gotta be very careful here, right there. Now what we wanna do is take the last end stop and install it on the side of the machine. Right here's your coupler, and this right here is your stepper motor that drives your Z-Rod. So I brought it down, as you remember, so it's just barely touching the surface. Now I'm gonna take this, put it into the extrusion, bring it up until it clicks. You can hear it and you can see it. Then it's gonna be hard to watch from your angle, but you wanna spin. Make sure you're all the way up. Tighten that in with a T-nut. Now when you see this and you bring it down, it'll stop and that's your Z end stop. Next, what we need is everything from bag B-042 or dash two. This is gonna be the top bearing, and we're gonna take it and press the bearing in, and it goes down in, and it should press nicely in. Mine just snapped, which is okay. Once the bearing's in, take the rounded screws and screw those down into uh, the sides. What that's gonna do is hold the bearing down so it does not come out. Now, I found that these are pretty tight and you have to thread it because it's a printed part, but it will go in. We're gonna do that side. And then in the back, we're gonna pop the flat screws through and put your T-nuts on like we have been doing. Now we're looking at the top left of the machine. This is your Z-rod. And what we need to do is put this down and go over it. And how that's gonna work is a T-nut is gonna go between the two bolts that are here. So this will go through like that and your T-nuts will sit on either side of those top extrusion bolts and then these will tighten in. Now, if you see issues with Z-banding or your Z-rod is not perfectly straight, you can remove this and it will work just fine. Um, you don't need this in the top, but TiVo, uh, you know, their instructions is to install it. So that's what I'm going to do. And I just want to make sure I'm going to spin this all the way back up and just make sure that it, you know, works. It looks good. We're not binding that kind of thing. I prefer to spin all the way up once and then all the way down as I'm looking at it. Nothing is binding, it feels good, it's moving good. Um, I think we're good to go. So we're gonna start installing our wires. Um, I just wanted to point out that the hot end goes in the middle here. The bed goes in the right side and you just, there's only one way they can go in. You push them in and you tighten them with your thumb and your finger just to make sure they're tight. Then we just need to look at what we have. So E is gonna be our extruder. We know that our extruder is up here. That's what this is. Then we have X, and this is gonna be our X end stop. And that's gonna be right here in the front. And then we should have another X, which will go in this one right here. And then Y actually runs underneath here and into the Y motor down here. Last but not least, underneath the machine, I found the Z end stop. So we need that to come up and plug into here. Now you should have gotten two ribbon cables and how that works is it's pretty simple. We're gonna go 
This is EXP82 and EXP1, and these are the front monitor. So we're gonna start with two because it's lower. I'm gonna push the ribbon cable in, and that's gonna come over and we're gonna plug it into the EXP2 port on our board here. EXP1 is gonna do the same thing. We're gonna run this, and the first one on the right here is number one. So that will go in. And you wanna be careful if you're tipping your printer over like this. Um, if you have a friend to help or, or you can bring it to the side of a table, that works. Um, I just wanted to show you and filming it's a little bit different. So one there and then two is right next to it. So this is what I came up with. We have a zip tie here, 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 and it holds in the power. Around the frame of the control box holds these in. And then one right here because I had to cut it to free the Y. Now I didn't see the Y uh, end stop cable before, but it was like way coiled up in here. So I cut that, I ran it back to the Y, and all I have to do now is snip that, and we're dialed in underneath. So I used some of the other zip ties to kind of cable manage. Um, I just kind of went down here. I think I'm gonna find a better way to do this, but for now, it's out of the way. I know it's gonna be sturdy, and it'll hold up those cables from getting wrecked. Now, something I did notice um, is over here. So this is for your bed. Now it does, right here, it does have uh, support there, but there's nowhere else for this to really get tied to. I was a little bit nervous, but it doesn't come far enough to catch anything uh, forward, so I think we're good. Next thing we need to do is bring our full X gantry almost all the way up. And we teach this in Luke Catfield's help guide in my X gantry rework in one of my videos, but we wanna make sure that we're level here. Um, I know we did a lot to make this structurally uh, level and square, but we need to verify it. So take a ruler and put it up on the right side, and I'm at about 80 millimeters. I'm actually gonna adjust it so I'm exactly at 80 millimeters, um, and that way it's easier to read right there. 80 millimeters on this side. I'm gonna put this in the same spot on this side and see where we're at. Well, I'm not at 80 millimeters, I'm actually about three millimeters off. What we need to do is adjust the X gantry because this side is slightly lower than this side. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna loosen these two here just a little bit. And I don't think, oh, maybe I kept it. So earlier I didn't tighten these all the way in yet and I think I got it enough. So let's go see where we're at here. Let's bring this down to 80, exactly 80 to the top extrusion, 80 millimeters. And man, that's close, 80 millimeters. So now when you get it straight, um, and you want it straight to the top extrusion, you don't want it straight to the bottom, you don't want it straight to the ground, you want it straight to this top extrusion. And that's exactly what we teach in uh, our other videos. And now I'm gonna take the small side of this Allen wrench, and I'm just gonna dial this in. Uh, tighten it in, make sure it's good and tight so it doesn't move on us, and we should be good. So I'm just going to bring it down and bring it back up a little bit, and we're going to check this thing again. We're going to stick with our 80 millimeter line because that's easy. 80 millimeters there, 80 millimeters there. We are dead on, and that's exactly what you want. That means this is going to float perfectly level across here every time. Bring your nozzle down almost all the way and make sure it's going to reach the end of the bed. So our stop's a little bit short here, so we're going to have to adjust it. If we pull the bed forward, we get all the way very to the edge. So this stops just short, and the way to adjust that is you have to adjust your tensioner and you have to adjust your motor, and you got to slide them just a little bit um, with each other and then tighten your belts up and check it again. Once you get that uh, perfect where it'll touch pretty much the edge of both, um, then you're good to go. But just make sure because you don't want to limit your build space here or the machine might think it's a little bit off center if it's not touching you know, the edges of the plate. I got it plugged in and what we want to do is turn it on and just make sure uh, everything comes on okay. I'm going to raise up the X gantry here 
I'm gonna flip it on now and we're gonna hope for no smoke. So there's our screen, it's on. It is showing uh, just about room temperature here. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure we're, uh, we're going back and forth. I'm gonna to go to prepare, move axis. We'll do X first. Let's just do one millimeter to make sure. And as, as I turn, I do see it's moving. And you can see it here that, and you can see it here with the values going up and down. If I zoom back out and I come back up, you can watch it. So that's good. Now we'll go back to, we'll go to Y. We'll go to one millimeter. And it looks like we're moving. It doesn't know where home yet is, so that's why it's not moving a lot, but that's okay. It's moving. We'll go to Z1. So we are good there. So now what I wanna do is test um, the homing. I wanna test all of our end stops. So what we're gonna do is go to prepare uh, and we're gonna go to home X and that worked. Now it's home Y. Y is not working. Don't forget if you do move, uh, if you do move the idler and that motor to make your bed more center. You have to move your Y axis as well. So I turned off the printer and I turned it back on. And like I was saying, uh, you have to make sure that you reset the Y end stop when you adjust everything like we talked about before. So now let's bring this forward. We'll go to prepare home Y. Perfect, now we're homed. Now, we wanna home Z, and this is a touchy one because you wanna make sure you don't crash the bed. So the first time I'm gonna do this, I'm actually gonna hit it with my finger just to make sure. So we'll hit this button, and I'm gonna do this. So now, we know that end stop is working, which is great, that way it's not gonna go crashing into the bed. So now if I do an auto home, gonna home all three and come on down just like this perfect next thing we want to do is check out that everything heats up okay so I'm going to go to control temperature nozzle and we're just going to give it I don't know, 100 degrees, uh, well, let's go up to 200, why not? I got everything uh, warmed up, the hot end is working, the heat bed is coming on as well, which is good. Um, so I think we're good to go here, I like it. We auto-homed, we got heat, um, and we are rocking and rolling. So I went to cool down, we got it going, I put the memory card in, and the front is over here, the back is over here. So it goes in facing this way and you just push it straight in. It's a full size card. Um, once this gets cooled down, um, I think we're really good to go. The next steps are just to uh, do, a, do a manual bed leveling. I have a video in my uh, description in my playlist there. Go look for it. It's the same thing with this as it is the Ender 3. You're gonna do all four corners and do it a couple times, the paper method. Uh, make sure you put your, um, obviously make sure you put your bed mat on there. You want to make sure uh, you're leveling it with the right stuff. Then what you're going to need to do after you get the bed leveled and set, um, go ahead and print a test. Uh, I'll get some going and I'll do a follow-up video with the, def with the test prints and everything. But like I said, level it up, 
load some filament, and let's get this thing printing. So I did notice something. So I, I was trying to figure out why they didn't give us any bed clips. And uh, the reason for that is, is this uh, build surface actually sticks down to the bed. We need to stick it down. So I looked over and we have the 3M here. So we need to actually um, put the surface down via stick. So we're gonna peel off one corner, just about this much. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up just so everything's good. Everything is good and straight. And we're gonna press down on this corner right here where we pulled that adhesive uh, protection back. Then we're gonna lift up. We're gonna slowly pull out a little bit and just start working it in. Go back and forth, back and forth, and just keep pulling a little bit more and a little bit more. Push it you know, towards the front first. You'll get rid of those bubbles. Push it down, make sure it's good. Grab a little more. And just keep working it in until you get all the way to the end. So once you get to the end, just push everything out like that. Um, then what you can do is grab uh, your ID, a credit card, something plastic, and then you can try to work any bubbles that you got out, uh, you know, that you see out. Try to get that done while you're going out. I missed this one because I was talking, but I am going to try to get it all the way out. And uh, that's how you put the bed on there. All right, the build is done. As you can see, I got it completely built. And uh, there's a little bit of different things going on here. So I wanted to get this thing printing, so I put the glass on there so it would be a little more level. Um, I am gonna go back and level it out with some blue tape underneath and make that center um, structurally sound, we'll say. But at least I got that finished so we could do some test prints. That brings me to the second issue. Um, leveling the bed, for me, was pretty difficult. Mostly because when you turn the bed leveling knobs, the screws were turning with them. So I was having a real hard time with dialing them in because the screws were just turning around. The original bed mat, um, they took away those holes that were on the early models in the corners because people were complaining that you lose print surface, which is true, but now the problem is you can't level your bed without those screws spinning. So what I had to do is actually grab a needle nose pliers, hold the bottom and spin you know, your knob. So I held the screw on the bottom and spun it and uh, got it leveled that way. Other gripe I have is the TiVo printers don't come with a filament holder. So you have to print one. Luckily, I have this one here, um, which I've printed for some of my other machines. Um, you can see I just keep a piece of blue tape on there in case I need it. But basically it sits on there and I can put it pretty much anywhere. And I was able to use that. That brings me to the third thing. Um, I actually had an issue where the screen was uh, beeping, like you were pressing the button. It was like going beep, 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 and it was going through the menus, like someone was pressing the button and turning the knob. Well, I wasn't touching it. So uh, what I had to do to fix that problem was take both the monitor cables off, rotate them, and push them back into the board in the back of the display, and make sure they were securely tightened, which means I had to clip all my zip ties that I did, and uh, I'll have to redo those too. But if you see that issue where your screen is going beep, 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 and it's, it's like you're clicking that button, but you're not touching it, um, pull the two monitor cables off both ends, flip them around, and reseat them really nicely, and just make sure you're good there. Other than that, you know what? I think this thing is pretty structurally sound, if, as long as you build it square like we talked about, and I really think it's going to be a great printer. With that being said, I hope you learned something today, and as always, keep printing. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, give me that big thumbs up. Click that subscribe button right here. And as always, if you want to see more great videos coming, click the bell right over here. This took about two hours to uh, build, but I know you can do it. Just make sure you're following the directions correct correctly and make sure you get it nice and square like we did. Later.